Hey, welcome to the stream. So in this short video, we're going to go over how long it takes to learn the web stack from scratch. Now, because I said it was going to be a short video, you know, if you know this channel, it's going to be a very long video, but I'm going to get to the point very quickly. And then we'll do a little bit of Q&A for anybody who has any questions. So, um, yeah, so let's just jump into it. Well, you know, I'll wait for a few more eyeballs to join into the live chat. Hey, welcome to the chat. If you're uh, watching the replay of this, I'll put a, somebody will put a timestamp for when I jump into the subject. I just want to let a few people come in. Hey, Arthur, how are you? Hope everything is good, 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 good. So we're just waiting for a few more people to join in and then we'll jump into the subject. Um, all right, thanks for letting me know that you can hear me. Yeah, so let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me and also tell me where you are coming from. Hi from... UK, hi from, I don't know, whatever. California, greetings from Albania. There we go, thank you. That's like they know. Hey, how are you guys? What's going on? Peace, peace. All right. So um, how many people? Well, we're at already 50. When we get up to 75 people, I'm going to jump into the subject. Uh, again, if you're watching the replay, um, look in the comments below. You have a time index where you can jump into it. Uh, and get to the point at hand. Hi from, where is that? What is that flag? I am sorry, Mr. Sudi. I don't know what that flag is. Is that India? It's hard to tell. It's very small. Jersey, uh, Estonia, Pakistan, Van Hanover, Germany. Yeah, very good. Detroit. Oh, yeah, we got a wide audience. Tunisia. Yeah, very cool. Costa Rica. I used to love the, uh, the poison dart frogs from there. Manchester, UK. Very good. Saudi Arabia, wow, nice. Wow, wow, wow. Good international audience, cool, cool. All right, so are we doing 60 people? We're almost there. Iran, ah, very good. Okay, cool, cool. Iran, yeah, yeah. oh, a couple of Iranians, very cool. Uh, Hungary, wow, very European, a lot of European. Newcastle, UK, <laughs> It's true, hey, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, what is it? it's 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock now in Europe, depending on where. Lithuania, Long Island, New York. Watch out, Anthony, big snowstorm coming, right? I don't know if we're going to get it up here in Montreal. Just in case you people don't know, I'm in Canada, which in a city called Montreal, which is north of New York City, about six hours drive. Costa Rica, Pakistan, Indianapolis. Uh, Russia, wow, very cool. Mexico, Rio de Janeiro. All right, so uh, 70 people. So I'm going to jump into the subject at hand, and then we'll do a little Q&A. So let me just jump in. So uh, a blog post I wrote on Studio Web. Uh, where's the blog? Sorry. So let me zoom in here so you guys can see it. So this was... Um, I got this really cool uh, email from a student of mine. Let me scroll down. Oh, right here. Hope oh, I click in. So yeah, so they sent me this great looking chart here, which breaks down their how much time to spend on each of the courses. So let me just read it. It's a very quick little blog post. Studio Web teaches what the web developer community calls the web stack. This includes the following languages: HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, SQL. I included SQL because I don't know, 95 to 99% of apps, uh, web apps, are going to be backed by an SQL database. Uh, it's just good to know. It's a good language. And then you have PHP optional, Python optional. Before Java developers and Python... Uh, oh, anyway, let me just continue. There are many other l optional languages and tech that can be used in the web stack, but we teach the above for a variety of reasons, least of which they are extremely popular in industry. So these are... These three right here, well, I would say these four, you're going to have to learn if you're learning the web stack. No big deal. They're very approachable. And then you got a bunch of alternatives, including PHP, Python, Java, C Sharp, Ruby, Perl, and there are others. But we'll leave it at that for now. How long does it take to build real websites? I am often asked, how long does it take to complete the Studio Web web stack courses? Well, a student sent this great graphic of their progress. They kept meticulous records. So here it is. So let's, uh, let's see if I can zoom into that even more so. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know if that's bigger or not, guys. 
There we go. So you see, they start with the web at the very top here, the web foundations. It's kind of, um, it's a short little video uh, course, which gives you basically a, a good view of, of the whole interwebs and the webs, you know, what, 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 what server, servers are and hosting and IDEs and uh, FTP. And it just gives you an overview. So sh this student did it in two days. Uh, didn't indicate hours here, though. But uh, so let's go to HTML Foundations, one of the first big courses. Uh, 11 days to complete it, 22 hours of work time. Uh, CSS3, 16 days to complete it, 28 hours of work time. I'm surprised by that because CSS3 is a, uh, it's a, big, uh, it's a big, big course, huge course. You learn responsive design and uh, all kinds of advanced stuff. So I'm surprised they, they really burned through the CSS quite quickly. JS Foundations, JavaScript Foundations, got this 26 hours of work. Now you notice it took them days, right, from July 26th to the 5th, uh, 8th of September to 11th. That's cool. It's good to take breaks as you're learning. You got to give your brain a time to uh, assimilate the information. Then PHP 7 Foundations, to eight days from the 20th to the 28th of September. Well, six days. I don't know why they say six. I guess they took two days off, which is good. 18 hours of work, PHP MySQL, uh, five hours of work. So a total of uh, 99 hours of work. So I say in the conclusion here, I can tell you that this is what we typically expect from students. The ballpark number is about 100 hours of work. I've seen uh, people do it quicker. I've seen people take their time. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day whether it takes you 100 hours to complete the, the foundation curriculum or 150 hours or 200 hours, whatever you do over a month or three months, it doesn't really matter or four months or five months because once you have the knowledge, you have it, everybody's gonna be starting at a different level. You may be due to fluke of circumstance have been exposed to things in your lives that made your brain more malleable, more inclined towards coding. So you learn to code a little bit quicker. But whether, let's say, you have uh, one person here is learning JavaScript and it takes them three months to learn JavaScript just because they're, they, they're having a hard time understanding how to code. And somebody else does the JavaScript only a month. Now, at the end of the day, once they both know JavaScript, nobody knows, nobody cares. It doesn't matter how long it took you to get there. All that matters is that you're there, right? So it doesn't matter what you often find with people. And I've been teaching people for a long time. Somebody may be really strong in the JavaScript end, and then that same person who had, a, who had an easy time with JavaScript will move over to CSS and layout, and they'll have a terrible time with that. And then somebody else is the opposite. So that's normal. You just got to plow through those situations where you may find some difficulty. Again, at the end of the day, whether it takes you three months or two months or six months, whatever, once you're there, you're there, right? You can't get it back. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the, that pretty much covers this. So let me just jump into a few book clean, uh, um, house cleaning things. So first of all, let me jump into this. So a friend of mine who uh, was a diabetic, way overweight, he's putting together a group and it's free uh, at the thebodydeveloper.com. You go sign up to the newsletter and he's giving free coaching and consultations because he's putting together a, a training uh, a, a training system for people based on what he what he saw work for him. So yeah, it's free. He's, he's only taking on a limited amount of people. He's already had some tremendous success with the early people. So yeah, that is, um, that's there for you. Go to thebodydeveloper.com, sign up to the newsletter. You won't get spammed. You may get a newsletter once every week or so. Uh, but yeah, it's free. So you might take advantage of that. I have another tab here. Another thing is just in case you guys don't know. So I have the old killer sites forum and the forum, I had put it in archive mode for a while. It used to be a very happening forum. You can see we have uh, 36,000 members. Uh, I pruned a lot off of them. I probably had 100,000 members over time. Uh, anyway, long story short, I'm there's activity growing here now. I'm starting to, uh, we had a guy just join a few hours ago here. Um, I'm going to be upgrading this software, upgrading the content. There's going to be exclusive content here, et cetera, et cetera. So you may want to, you know, maybe a place you can discuss the web tech, et cetera, entrepreneurship, uh, social media marketing, career, exactly. Anyway, 
Yeah, another form, but I'm going to be on here putting stuff up. So I just want to mention that. So again, once again, if you want to lose weight, bodydeveloper.com, sign up, it's free. He's taken on a handful more of uh, mentees. And there you go. And if you want to check out uh, my blog post about Cody on Studio Web, it's blog.studiowell.com. A bunch of these are, are related to teaching code, so it may not be suitable for everybody here, but there you go. That's it. So I'll do a few questions. How are we doing for time? Ten minutes. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'll answer this question here. Hi, just joined the stream. You may have said, but where are follow and rewrites mostly covered in, in the stack? Please, the fan. I.O. read writes mostly covered, in, mostly covered in the stack, please. Oh, that would be back, if I understand your question, uh, that would be server-side programming. That would be the PHP or JavaScript on the server or Python on the server, et cetera, et cetera. Where is the plant? It's right there. And I ordered another huge one. I'm waiting for the huge plant to come in. Greetings. Uh, I'm very jealous, very jealous. Just a quick quest. I don't have any real experience, any real world experience, but I have built one or two decent projects. Should I apply and lie about my experience and be honest? Haha. <laughs> Honesty is the best way to go, my friend. Uh, just put up the apps, show what you've done. And, but what I do, I just reach out for some small local business and uh, maybe a startup or maybe a, 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 um, what's it, a nonprofit and do a couple of little projects for them and bing, bang, boom, Bob's your uncle, you've got your real projects. I haven't received a newsletter. Have you checked your spam box? Because we did send them out. Check your spam box. If not, email me because they were sent out. At, I'm at a point where learning full stack just seems like too much for a junior developer. No, no, just take your time with it. Take your time with it. You got to understand a lot of the, uh, in the nerd zeitgeist out there, a lot of these people are claiming you got to know like all oh, like this much right? It's not true. You just got to learn your fundamentals and a few key technologies. And then a lot of the stuff that's out there, like 99%, you don't have to know unless a particular project comes up or a particular job comes up and you have to learn it. So don't let it overwhelm you. Just learn your basics and then just jump into it, you know? Uh, Estefan, how easy is it to deploy a private project using JS frameworks like Node? Does it ha one have to spend for cloud hosting, even testing? Way easier to test PHP desk, say we say with that. Well, yeah, that's the one of the big strengths of PHP full stack is that it's really easy to get up and running. That's a huge advantage. Um, no, there are inexpensive Node.js hosting options out there, but you don't have to pay for a huge amount, uh, very fancy cloud hosting. I just finished a PHP course. I'm already... Am I ready to pick up Laravel? Yeah, if you've done the, 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 all the, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, do the PHP MySQL, and then start looking into Laravel. Hey, Steph, how are you going? I'm going pretty good. I hope everything is good with you. Uh, when did you start Studio Web, and did you start off with a lot of money? I started off Studio Web. I built a prototype about a decade ago, believe it or not, the original prototype. And we've rewritten the software about a year and a half ago. And I've been, I just finance it myself, uh, especially in the first several years. Uh, I was just financing myself. It makes money now, but it, uh, it was a self-finance thing for several years. Uh, yeah, register again. You're, are you talking about the body developer thing? If you are, let me know. Uh, okay, let's see. Movies for the Blind says, I got my first front-end job after two months. Fantastic. Took a class in Udemy and started hunting for jobs. I know HTML, CSS, some bootstrap, learning JavaScript. Yeah, very good. Cool. Good for you, man. Hey, sorry for asking again. I finished HTML last year, but then got some family problems and stuff. Can I reset the program and start over? Yeah, just send me an email and uh, with your Studio Web ID and mention you want that reset, and I will reset it myself, or I'll have somebody reset it for you. Uh, okay, we got that. Let me go up here. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Uh, can I buy your course with a transfer from my bank? I believe so with the PayPal option. So you go to the store, you select your course, and you pay with PayPal, and you can do a, a debit transfer there. Thanks. I am pretty fast at developing website without using any framework. I'm really, really slow with framework. Do you think it's a commonplace problem with the framework? Well, you got to get used to a framework. 
first of all. And yes, when you use a framework, there's overhead involved with it because it's a framework. And so if you're developing really quick little things, it, it, it probably in many cases, it can be overkill to use a framework. There's a judgment call. Hey, Steph, does it take... Hey, what does it take to become a web entrepreneur? Is it time consuming? Can you have family, kids, and launch a web business? Is it too much work? Do you have kids yourself? Thanks. That's a good question. Depends on, do you have partners? What type of business it is? Are you financed? If you got financing uh, from you know investors and so forth, then you can uh, set a schedule for yourself. You don't necessarily have to kill yourself in that regard. Um, so there's different ways of approaching it. Web entrepreneurs are a broad thing, uh, but you have to have wherewithal, meaning uh, typically uh, a typical startup will take time to build. So it depends on what you're doing, you know? It's doable though, I know friends who've done it, you know? Um, hello from India, hello from, hola from Spain, hello from Iran, yeah, 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 night owls, many thanks for the good input, no problem. Hello from London, Miami, from New York, Tunisia, North Africa, very cool. Norway, wow, we got a big international audience here. All right, so um, any other questions? That was pretty much Dark Knight and Packard and Cyprus, uh, Morocco. Uh, yeah, give me the likes, give me the likes, guys, give me the likes. Uh, all right, so uh, Rio de Janeiro, Mexico. All right, so any other questions? It's a short little stream. Uh, oh, need to nerd. Yeah, I haven't sent one out in about a week, so uh, that will come, that will come. Make sure you're registered. It will come, it will come. Make sure you whitelist that uh, so that uh, you don't, you get it as well. Uh, to, be, to be, you know, as you can tell, you're never going to get spammed by me. I don't send out new letters very often. I'm trying to step it up to be once a week, once every week and a half. I am an Angular expert and use it in all web projects. Any need to learn Vue or React? Also, is Python way fast in execution than PHP? No, Python is quite slow in execution relative to PHP, last time I checked. But PHP is actually quite fast compared to its competitors, uh, with the exception of Java, of course. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, any need to learn Vue. Now, if you're doing all your Angular projects, uh, excuse me, if you're doing all your projects in Angular, you got work, don't need to learn Vue. You learn when you need to be able to do something effectively. Maybe there was a situation where Vue would be more effective, I don't know, than Angular, or depending on the project, or maybe this is a job opportunity. Don't let the, the nerd zeitgeist tell you, you gotta learn this, you gotta learn this. You don't, you don't have to unless there's a job. Uh, hey, from Israel, cool. All right, Daniel, what's going on here? I'm a computer technician, but want to switch to software. I think that's a good idea. Hardware uh, technician is uh, not as profitable, I think, in long term as software. Right now in Germany, right now I'm in Germany, and there's a lot of institutes offering one-year boot camps, free if unemployed. I'm between that and getting a bachelor. It depends what you, uh, do you already have a bachelor? It depends, uh, I guess, maybe not. If you get a bachelor in comp sci or something, um, that would open up more opportunities for very big corporations. Although I think over time, the need for those higher educational degrees are diminishing quite a bit. As Elon Musk famously said, uh, you don't need a degree. Even Apple uh, has said this, Google is saying this. You know, so it depends what your long-term goals are. My dear respected sir, will jQuery die? Slowly, slowly, it's lost its favor. Yes, yeah, slowly. But you know, if you learn it and it goes away, then you just learn whatever else you need to learn. As any experienced developer will tell you, as you learn more, as you do more, it becomes faster and faster and easier and easier to learn new technology. No big deal. Yes, I've heard of Yemen. Of course I've heard of Yemen. Uh, what's this? Lafa La Highliner is my nick when I'm a game. Okay. Uh, what's going on? Hey, Stefan, I'm currently teaching myself HTML, CSS, SAS for the past month and plan to learn JS React soon after I finish a few more projects. Would you say PHP MySQL for backend or no JS? Depends what your goal is. They're both good choices. 
you know, look around. I start doing a little job opportunities, snooping, searching, see what they're looking for, and make your decision based on that. You know, if let's say you decide to learn Node and you, you and for some reason you found out you got to learn PHP MySQL, it would be pretty easy. Hello from Colombia. Very good. Uh, can I do small freelancing jobs after learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Yes, you can. Although you have more options if you learn PHP for the freelance on top of that. But yes, you can. I feel a little bit demotivated in web stack and I feel like not knowing a lot of things. Any advice? Yeah, well, sure. Uh, first of all, um, a lot of people will put out YouTubes out there, YouTube videos telling you got to learn this and this and this and this and this and this. And this, 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 this. It's not true. Uh, first of all, and I've been doing this since the 90s. You just need to know your fundamentals and then you just pick up whatever it is you need to learn for a particular job at hand. So there's a lot less for you to learn, first of all. Even within the languages, like uh, if you look at any of the, you know, JavaScript, Python, Node, uh, not Node, JavaScript, Python, Java, C Sharp, PHP, they're big. These are really big languages. And most of the time as a developer, you're going to be using maybe 5% of the language, really that little. Um, the key is just learning the basic constructs and the basic way you write apps and code, and then you just go on from there. So you, you're looking out there right now, like so many people, and you see this huge amount of technology. I got to learn uh, web dev, I got to learn server, I got to learn uh, uh, Java, or somebody will say you got to learn Python, I got to learn this, I got to learn this, I got to learn this, I got to learn this. And the fact of the matter is you don't. You don't. You know, the people will, you know, they'll often... Um, they'll, they'll often hear all this, and then when they finally get into the real world, they'll realize, like, oh my God, I just gotta need, I just need to know this, you know. And a lot of times, the, the demand is in with technologies that are been around for a long, 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 long time. Like Python, I think, depending on the measures, either JavaScript or Python are the most popular languages in the world. These are 25, 30 old languages, 30 year old languages. SQL is so 40, 50 years old. C, C++, 40, 50 years old. Java, 25 years old. So a lot of the old technologies that the young nerdlings go, oh, you shouldn't learn. That's where all the jobs are because everything's pretty good. So don't let it demotivate you. I suggest you just discipline yourself to 20 minutes a day. Instead of concentrating on that end goal, concentrate, make the goal daily execution of learning something new. That's your goal. So you get positive reinforcement emotionally, which is very important. So every day you say, I'm just going to do 20 minutes today. So if you were on my studio web course, shameless self-promotion, you say, I'm going to go, I'm going to do two videos, or I'm going to do three lessons and answer the quiz questions. Lessons are only, you know, five minutes each, six minutes each. So it's easy. So you do three, uh, three videos or four videos, you do the quizzing, and then you go, you know what? I don't feel like it anymore, but that's okay. You stop. But you know what happened? You just made progress. You just completed three lessons. Fantastic. It's all tracked. Then the next day, you do another 20 minutes, another three lessons. And then what you, what's going to happen, of course, is, you know, one day you're going to say, I'm, I'm only going to do three lessons. You end up doing eight or nine lessons. So, yeah, just concentrate and make the goal the daily activity of just moving the ball forward. That's all. Not the end goal. And then one day you go, oh, my God, I've, le I've learned the web stack. So that's how I would suggest it. How can I get a remote job salary in US at a third world a third world country. You gotta become very good with your English, number one. Have a really nice looking website. Make sure your written English is very, very good. Make sure your communication skills are very, very good. And uh, make sure you have a really strong resume. And then you start reaching out to people in the US. Hi Stefan, can I commit I cannot commit myself to work. I wanted to know is there a solution to get rid of this problem? Yeah, you, you, I talk about this in my Lizard Wizard training course, which is t teaches you advanced, super advanced psychology. Your, what you like and dislike has a lot to do with what you do, believe it or not. If you do something on a regular basis uh, and you make sure that when you're doing it, you make it a pleasant experience, your brain will kind of get used to it. So if you don't want to work at learning to code, as I suggest, just make it a, a game out of it. Say, Today, I'm just going to do three lessons. That's it. Write code for 20 minutes. Boom, you're done. And by doing that every day, all of a sudden what happens, your brain starts going, you know, this coding thing is cool. So let's say 
and you give yourself a reward. So you do your, your 20 minutes of coding that day. And then what happens is uh, you give yourself a reward. I don't know, you uh, go buy yourself a coffee or whatever it is you want, a candy bar or something. But you just want to create positive emotions with doing the work. And you do a little bite size and then next thing you know, you enjoy what you do. Uh, hi, have you used Digraph? I have not. Uh, do you think getting into freelancing is a good step before becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah, it is because it teaches you business. It teaches you about business. Entrepreneur uh, Freelancing is a really good first step to get into 100%. I highly recommend it. So uh, yeah, links below to my course. So if you look below, by the way, I don't have it in front of me. Um, I recommend a few books. Uh, for people who are totally new, I have my book down below on web design. And if you're interested in, if you already know your foundations, let's say you completed my foundations courses, then you want to pick up the refactoring books, again, link below, and the design patterns books, if you want to level up your game. That's how you go from being a noob who knows a little bit to being a very good developer, not more tutorials, not uh, code competitions. That's how you go about doing it. If you, that's your goal if you want to become a great developer. All right. Uh, here we go. Here's a good question. Should I start learn PHP frameworks if I know OOP and PDO in PHP? If so, should I learn Laravel or CodeIgniter? Do not learn CodeIgniter. That's old school stuff. Uh, even the people who started CodeIgniter gave away CodeIgniter or sold it years and years and years ago. Laravel is the key. Should you learn it? If your goal is to become a, an app, a big app developer, a medium, or let me rephrase that. If your goal is to be able to create complex or medium to medium to complex apps or creator, then learn Laravel. Um, yeah, let's learn on the side. It's very cool. It's, it, at the worst case scenario, it will teach you some ideas about how you might structure your apps because Laravel is a very refined. Um, MVC framework. Is Python automation good for freelancing? You know, that's a good question. I don't know about freelancing, but I think contracting. What's the difference? Freelancing is you go in to see a client, they got a project, and they want you to handle the whole project. You create a bid, and you give them a proposal, and then you work on it on your own time. Contra that's, a con that's freelancing. Contracting is you may go work for like an animation studio where they need a Python coder for six months to write a bunch of Python scripts to uh, handle the uh, server farm for their rendering engines. Um, and a lot of that is done with Python, by the way. So that's where you would go work for them at a fixed salary that you negotiate for a short period of time. The good thing about contracting is because it's short term, it could be three months, six months, one month, or a year, typically the, ho the salaries which you get paid is much higher than you would get paid if you were a full-time employee permanent. So keep that in mind. Uh, is third world country degrees are still very important to a job? Ah, that's a good question. I couldn't say. I guess it depends on where you go work, right? Uh, was, uh, uh, that's been my strategy. It works very well, Stefan. Very good. I assume it's about the work. Uh, but Steph, I know Python and it helps me in office, but when I try to build a project, I, I, I am not convinced that it fits. Hmm. Well, what I would do is, you know, Python, you're comfortable with it. I maybe learn a Python framework like Django, which apparently can be difficult to learn, or maybe, um, what was, there's another Python framework and its name just jumped right out of my brain as I was thinking now. And you just type in Python frameworks and learn one of those little frameworks and that might help you out there. Uh, you said a lot to learn the fundamentals and worry about learning other languages as you need. Can you give an example of how you come to know what is best for the stack? Oh, yeah, that's, that, that's a lot of that comes down to experience and judgment. Um, so, for example, um, a friend of mine was developing a pretty, pretty uh, important application and they used, decided, the main app is PHP Laravel, but they decided for the um, messaging part of the system to use Node in that situation. And they use Node because Node is super fast and efficient when it comes to asynchronous communication for messaging type of apps. So that's a, a classic example 
where you would use a particular um, a particular framework or a particular language or particular technology based on the needs of that particular uh, job. Uh, so that's that's an example there. Um, whenever I was freelancing or whenever I do anything really, I always look at what the technical needs are and what the business needs are. And then I make my choice in terms of stacks. I'm not married to a particular one. I hope that helps. All right. Basically, my question is, if one year full stacks are worth it because I get ads from those institutes all the time, haha, I want to get into the job market ASAP, not happy with my field, thanks in advance. Yeah, I can see that. You know, if you, it, I would look around, before you make that decision, look around at job opportunities, maybe reach out and ask them, do you need a degree or not? Or will experience in a good portfolio be enough? Ask 20 companies and see what they say. And uh, then you can make your decision. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. Mm. How did you get your first freelance gig? Um, believe it or not, classified ad, classified ad. So that would be the equivalent of a Google ad, the targeted to a location, to, um, my loca to my city. Hello from Zambia, is Flask, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the other framework, Flask. Is Flask as good as Django or is it less powerful? Apparently it's, it's less powerful. I only looked at it very briefly. It's, less, it's much less complex though. So Flask could be a good choice for small projects and to just kind of jump into the whole idea of a framework. Could you share something about GitHub projects of yours that you're really proud of? Thanks. Well, I'm actually proud of my SaaS, Studio Web here. Uh, I'm proud of that because uh, I got actual clients uh, been on TV talking about it. Uh, I, my clients are uh, educational schools, lots of institutes, whether it be middle school, high school, some colleges. So um, I architected it, designed it. I don't write the code anymore because I just don't have the time. But that's the one I'm proud of. Uh, that's the recent one. I hope that makes sense. Uh, do you think TypeScript will stick around? Yes, I do. I think it will be niche tech for large organizations. Uh, how did you market Studio Web in its early stages? Oh, I tried all kinds of different things. Marketing a product, a SaaS, it depends on the product you are marketing. Um, different, uh, different industries have to be targeted in different ways. So with the schools, there's particular avenues you got to go through. Uh, if I was marketing to restaurants, it would be totally different type of marketing strategy. So it really depends on what you would do. That being said, um, I have found that Facebook ads have been just not effective at all. Facebook, they show you all these great numbers and metrics that you can target somebody who's got uh, five fingers and two toes and, uh, uh, you know, and they, they, like, uh, they like Android and, you know, whatever. But I found that the results have been abysmal in terms of actual contacts and conversions. The charts look, look really good in Facebook, but it makes me wonder if there's some uh, fudging there. I don't know, but on the, mean, uh, on the flip side, when I would put ads in, uh, well, excuse me, um, AdWords, Google, um, it was uh, far more effective, far more effective. That's my experience and a few of my friends' experiences. Although I've heard people online claim that they've done very well with Facebook ads. Again, whether you advertise on Facebook or Instagram or uh, YouTube or wherever, uh, Google itself, that also is greatly impacted by what it is you are trying to sell. Uh, all right, how are we doing? 34 minutes, I'm gonna end this off. I'm trying to keep the streams going. I'm trying to cut them down. Hi, sir, your video is awesome. Well, thanks, appreciate it. Um, that's it. Watching, uh, watching from New Jersey, experiencing snowstorm here. Whoa. Okay. Uh, stay, stay warm. Is a personal website, a good project for beginners and web dev? 100%. Do your own personal site. 100%. Uh, PHP or Django for beginner for backend. Oh, PHP is going to be easier to learn. Uh, made a clone of Amazon, hooked it up to Stripe API, just started sending out apps today. Hey, congratulations. Good job. That's what you do. You, you work on something you like. 
One of my funny stories, I worked on a dating site, site uh, ages ago. Uh, I wanted to learn more about Java and a bunch of Java technology messaging and stuff like that. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build a dating site. I didn't do tutorials, I just built a dating site. And I used good design patterns and good refactoring skills to make this dating site work. And all of a sudden, the dating site started making money. And I started getting people on the dating site. It was crazy. Anyway, that's another story. Ah, from the UK. Hello, Vladimir. Uh, my family is originally from Kiev. How important is having a good LinkedIn profile for getting a job? I think it helps. I think it helps. In fact, what we're doing with Studio Web, my, uh, my learning says, we are now adding in the, uh, there's a public and private profile that all students have. And we're adding to that the ability to directly link your Studio Web accomplishments to LinkedIn. So every time you pass a course, boom, you can post it to LinkedIn. Every time you get a certification, boom, post it to LinkedIn. So I think LinkedIn is good. And we're putting our money where our mouth is by actually making, enabling that. Hey, Steph, do you know if Aaron Chair is worth the money? What about Embody if you've tried it? I've never tried Embody. I use the uh, Herman Miller Mira Chair here, Mira, and I just prefer that. It's important that you sit in the chair. You may find the Aaron better. You may find the Embody better. Just go and sit in it if you can. Sit in and try it out, see how it feels. I sat on the Mira, and I said, ooh, I like the Mira better. So I bought the Mira. I've had it for like 10 years. It's a fantastic chair. Uh, let's go. Ahead. Can you freelance with a .NET stack? Potentially, but I think it would be uh, difficult, more difficult to find jobs because most of the freelancing is going to be with smaller companies who will be leveraging probably uh, PHP or JavaScript or something, maybe some Django. Uh, although you probably you could, you know, that being said, I would imagine you can find some Microsoft specific houses as well. All right, um, how are we doing? 37 minutes. All right, so a few more questions. I'm out of here. Uh, I knew it. Your name is too much of a Ukrainian one. <laughs> yeah, actually, the Mishuk, Mishchuk is the Americanized version of our name because when our my great-grandparents came from the Ukraine, they went through Ellis Island in New York City, and they said they came up and they said they couldn't speak English. And, they, and the guy said, what's your name? And he said, Mishuk. And he said, Mishchuk? No, Mishuk. Mishchuk. And they just wrote it O-O-K when it's actually spelled M-I-S-C-H-U-K, I believe, the original spelling. But anyway. But then the swingers came to your website. Exactly. I got flooded with swingers. For some reason, I didn't want to be the, the, the nerd who had the giant swinger site. In retrospect, I wish I would have kept my swinger site. Uh, I could have sold it. Where were you able to find out what was causing your Wi-Fi issue? Was it your ISP? I think it's the ISP because as you can see, it's going well. I have the same router. I didn't restart it. I actually sent back the router I bought because I, I did a few live streams and it was streaming fine. We'll see what happens. I got a feeling it was just uh, overload on the uh, my routers, excuse me, on my uh, provider's local network. Uh, First, first time here from Calgary, Canada. How are you? I'm from Montreal. Would you have a mind map or a graphical path for a new program to start following both front and back end paths? Thank you. Good question. Yeah, if you just go to um, Studio Web, we have a store uh, by now. Here we go. This is the retail store. It's all provided in the system. So when you... Uh, what's going on here so if you would get like the full stack course or complete web designer when you buy it you get into our application and the order is all provided for you the whole roadmap is provided for you so uh, that's it so there there you go i can i'll you know i'll do a vlog on that i'll do a video on that and i'll just draw it out for you guys so you can see it but it's it's all it's, it's in it's in the system um <clears throat> What's your take on Freed Code Camp? <clears throat> I looked at it briefly. Uh, there's a lot of material there. I think that these days the problem that learner, learners have is not finding material. There's tons of material, there's tons of material. It's not what it was. It's finding experienced developers. Um, I don't know what their stuff is like. 
Um, again, I have a different approach based on my decades of experience, foundations, and get out there. Um, so, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure there's stuff to learn there, though. I'm not dissing them. I'm sure there's stuff to learn there. I say, you know, when I was learning how to code, I learned from several different sources. I would literally spend three to $4,000 a year on books for several years, and I would use to read them all. It wasn't, videos weren't pervasive at the time. In fact, I, I was one of the first persons in putting out web development and design training videos. That being said, in my mind, if you're learning for a career that can make you big money, which development can, coding can, it kind of makes sense to spend a few bucks every year learning new stuff until you get yourself there. But it's easier for you guys now because A, you got tons of information. B, the technology is kind of plateaued. It's not changing every year or two like it used to dramatically. The way we develop web apps today is pretty much the way they've been doing it since about 2012, I would say. 2012, 2013. It's pretty static. Why? Because that's when the technology hit that, that matur maturity plane, if you will. So there you go. What's going on here? All right. Uh, a few more questions. Oh, God. Should I use WordPress plugin to make school manager system or use custom code? Ooh, depends if that school plugin is capable. Problem with the plugins, um, you're dependent on the plugin. Any updates to the Need to Nerd newsletter? Yeah, it's there. I'll be sending out a newsletter this week for sure. Um, you're welcome to join it. Uh, where is it? Need to Nerd. I call it, yeah, let me just uh, get to it here. Yeah, just go to needtonerd.com. It's developer's newsletter. As people have told you, uh, I don't send them out too often, but I recommend, you know, if you want it, I'm going to have exclusive content, yada, 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 yada. Why am I doing that is because I uh, want to have a direct connection with, with everybody rather than to be dependent on uh, YouTube or whatnot. All right, there you go. Um, I could keep answering forever and ever, but I have to head out. I got stuff to do, but it was fun. Um, why are you just now starting to buffer? Uh oh, am I starting to buffer? All right. Well, that's a good time to let you guys go. So thanks for joining the stream. I appreciate it. Um, sign up to that newsletter if you want to be in contact with me. I'll be sending out stuff. Um, you can, if you want to get free training from my buddy, thebodydeveloper.com. And you want to join the forum, we're going to be doing some major upgrades here, lots of exclusive content. Um, again, I just want to have a direct connection with everybody, and that's why I'm doing this. So thanks for joining again. I leave you with some of my ASMR from Maine, Cape Elizabeth, Maine. One of the most, if you ever get to North America, it's a beautiful place to go in the summertime. All right, thanks for joining. Cheers. Oh, by the way, um, my business channel is back up too. I put up a video today. Uh, you can get to it through my main YouTube channel.